Monster Mash Mini Review. Ah, so this is what happens at Slumber Parties. Slumber Party Massacre 3 is an 80s holdover released in 1990, featuring big hair, cheesy music, and tons of 80s flair. It's also the best entry in the Slumber Party Massacre trilogy. How long has that guy been sitting there? A while, I think. Looks weird. Yo, buddy, keep your eyes to yourself. See that? He averted his eyes. That's a sign of submission. I learned that studying orangutans in biology class. You are an orangutan, Duncan. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, a guy like that is just the kind of guy we need at the party tonight. Duncan, it's a slumber party. And no one wants to slumber with you. <laughs> slumber outside. Oh. After a day of intense volleyball at the beach, a group of high school girls decide to throw a slumber party. To no horror fan's surprise, some horny boys crash the proceedings, as well as a mass killer with a giant drill. With the police ignoring their calls for help, the girls must fight back on their own against the driller killer. You're not being nice! Fuck you! What a waste. Although having no connection to the first two movies, Slumber Party Massacre 3 is an entertainingly cheesy slasher that manages to also feature a few disturbing moments of terror. It's a strange blend of low-budget cheese and raw brutality. For almost every laughably amusing scene, there seems to be a scene of genuine disturbance. It's definitely one of the better slasher films to come out during the last half of the 80s and early 90s. I drink a little too much beer. Ken, don't worry about it. Whiskey Dick strikes again. The backstory of the killer is pretty disturbing. From what I could piece together, it seems the killer was molested by his police officer uncle and now has problems getting it up for the ladies. It's an interesting, if slightly vague, backstory. Britton Fry, of Hide and Go Shriek, is amusing and entertaining as the killer, throwing out one-liners, wearing a creepy disguise for the first few kills, and having a psycho killer headquarters in a van parked outside the house complete with corpses and burning candles. The cast is a mixed bag. Lulu Williams is the slut of the group and is probably the hottest girl of the bunch. David Lawrence, who plays Frank, is a dead ringer for Family Guy comedian Seth MacFarlane. And the one actress that actually surprised me in this was semi-scream queen Maria Ford. The majority of films I've seen her in, such as Strip to Kill 2 and Strip Teaser, she has been painfully wooden and downright terrible. But she manages to turn in a decent performance here, and her semi-rape and disembowelment by Drill is one of the highlights of the film. She's as hot as ever in SPM 3, but the red wig is a little distracting. Yeah, if I saw a masked guy following me with a drill, I wouldn't wait until the second glance to start running. Slumber Party Massacre 3 features a few original kills, including a death by vibrator, and a few lame ones. The special effects are decent, and the drill kills are solid. Slumber Party Massacre 3 starts off as a bit of a whodunit for the first half of the film. It features red herrings galore. Could it be the creepy guy from the beach? Could it be the creepy neighbor who spies on the girls with his telescope? But suddenly the film reveals the killer, and in one of the rare occurrences in Slashers, the killer straight up says, fuck it, and just goes through the front door, weapons blazing, or drill spinning in this case. It's an amusing and fresh approach, and the film really picks up steam in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> so in conclusion, if you were to watch a Slumber Party horror movie, make sure it's the underrated and entertaining Slumber Party Massacre 3. It's got boobs, blood, unintentional humor, and a killer soundtrack. Thank you, let's be logical. You 
can't stop your parents from moving, why don't you just move in with us? My mom would notice. She's going through menopause. Never, ever admit your weaknesses.